Hi, my name is Marudu Maran Gunashekaran and in this video I'd like to show you how to use the Ajax Splattering plugin that comes with OWASP Z Attack Proxy or the OWASP Zap. I'm running the latest version of Zap that is version 2.3.1 as of July 28, 2014. And the website that we're going to use today to test uh, the Ajax Splattering plugin is Northwind Products Management. This website is built on ASP.NET MVC that uses HTTP GET POST for regular operations like managing your account, log off, log in. And this page is completely AJAX enabled. If you view a product based on a category and you could add a product based on a quantity, let's say lamb meat. These functionalities use the jQuery JavaScript library that uses XML HTTP in the background. And this is what we're going to test OWASP Zap against. So I'll bring in a Firefox window here and navigate to the same page. I understand the risks because the website uses a self signed certificate. All right, so we should stop right there. And if you went back to Zap, in the History tab, it would have identified all our actions. And if you go back to the HTTP sessions, you should see some kind of sessions because we have a session active for the account admin, but unfortunately you don't. So what we need to do is identify the cookie that is responsible for keeping the session active for the user admin which happens to be the .aspx auth in this website's case. So what we need to do is right click on that particular cookie and then flag as session token. When you do that, the flags for that particular column would, would also include the value session. Right now what you expect is soon as you flag the session cookie, if you go to HTTP sessions you should see the some sessions like session 0 or session 1 but right now you don't. What you need to do is uh, whenever you make some changes you need to browse the web page again so Zap would identify a valid session for that particular user in that browser. With that in place you could add this particular website in context. Let's say context 1 is good enough and Ajax Spider that particular website in scope. Spidering is started. There's one spider in Act 2. Okay, now that would not do any good to identify any URLs that is used by the products management page because unless you set the particular session as active, it would not be picked up by the Ajax Spider. So I'll stop this website. Ajax splattering and then go back to the session that is active or the session or valid session with the authentication token set it as active and then right click attack Ajax spider in scope okay so we're logged in which means Ajax spider actually used our session HTTP session and our authentication cookie but when you went back to the HTTP sessions it set back to null the reason being, if you win, if you go back to the Ajax Spider and stop it right now, let's scroll up to the beginning, you should see a request for log off. Because the Ajax Spider also saw the link to log off and then clicked it and invalidated our session token that is the ASPX auth to null. So what we need to do is pick that request and exclude it from the spider. You could do it this way hit OK or you could also identify the URL here and then exclude from spider. Hit OK or cancel since I've already added it I hit cancel so now when we right click an attack by Ajax spider and scope we should see nothing yet because I think all the HTTP sessions that were active were invalidated. Okay I'll quickly stop We'll pick the website and then log in again so we could obtain a valid token. All right, right there we got one and that session is set to active. Now when we start the Ajax Spidering, we have a session that is active in the HTTP sessions and we also have uh, 
the log off request excluder from the context, we should be able to see the products and list and add methods underneath it. So right click, attack, Ajax, Spider, and scope. It will start a couple of uh, Firefox windows. And in some time, we should be able to see the products tree here. All right. There's also another link that we expect to see that is uh, that is called the add method. Okay, there it is. Once it identifies the add via the get, it will also fill the form and try to post it. So we got a post. Now that is good enough for me. What I could do is uh, stop the Ajax spidering now or wait until it completes, until the crawl depth is uh, satisfied or until the Ajax spider identifies all the possible links that it could click. I'll go ahead and stop right now because we could quickly see how we could scan for SQL injection here. Now if you go to alerts tab or active scan, the scan settings that I have right now is only to scan SQL injection, right? So what we need to do is scan this particular tree here for SQL injection. Active scan subtree. We could go back to alerts. We don't see a SQL injection yet, but momentarily we should be able to see a SQL injection there. There it is. You could go back to active scan, see the progress, or abruptly terminate it. A quick recap of what we did so far. Okay, if you have a website, you need to identify the session token for that website. In case the session token is not displayed by default, you could find the session token from the params tab and flag that as a session token. And once you have flagged that as a session token, go do a couple of browsing with that session token and you should be able to see that session token in the HTTP sessions. Alternatively, if you know what the session token is, what you could do is go to Tools, Options, scroll back to HTTP sessions and add dot ASPX auth or anything like add TC cookie. If that is your authentication cookie, if that cookie is responsible for maintaining a session, once that setting is done, if you go back and browse with a valid session, then that would be present here in the HTTP sessions. And then what you need to do is right click, set that particular session as an active session or for whatever user you would like to use the Ajax spidering against. And then one other thing you need to do is identify the log off request and exclude it from that scanner exclude from scanner spider proxy whatever you want in this case will exclude it from the spider once that is done you're all set to scan the entire website with a valid authentication token with the Ajax spidering